Hey, what is up guys? Guitar Rock here, welcome back to another Blue Archive video. Now, I'm sure you guys are aware that the selector is available for sale right now for $20. Alright, convert to your country's currency, it should be about 20 USD. As you can see, I've purchased two of the packs. Uh, one is the one that comes with the selector and a recruitment ticket, and one more comes with Pyroxines and a guaranteed 3-star ticket. Now, what's the difference between this pack? Uh, if you guys are not aware, there's three distinct packs right now. So the one with the student choice ticket, this is the selector. This is ideally the one that you want to buy, if you can only buy one. Now, if you can afford to buy two, all right, again, all three of these are same price. If you can afford to buy two, I recommend buying this one and buying this one. All right, this one is going to come with student guaranteed ticket times 10, all right, and then Pyroxene's uh, 1.3K. Now, you are still going to be able to if you are lucky, you can get more than one 3-star, but you're guaranteed at least one 3-star in this 10 pool right here, right? It's like a 10 pool ticket. Now, if you can buy a third one, then this one is going to be pretty cool, but this one comes with like all of this stuff that you can pretty much farm in the game, so I don't really see the need of this particular one. Now, this one is going to be fully random. It's not a selector, so you can't really pick which one you want in particular. So is this actually worth it, right? Now, it depends on the value of your account, right? If you are a new player, I would say yes, because uh, you're going to get very high chance you will get a new student. Yes, you're still gambling. There's still going to be a high chance for you to get, uh, in this case, like an old character, right? But again, right, uh, if you are looking from it from a standpoint of you are trying to like also support the game in a way, sure, go for it, right? So that's what I'm doing right here. I'm a big Nexon supporter, all right? I, I love Nexon. Nexon is number one. So therefore, I'm here to support Nexon. We're gonna buy this. 32 days, uh, it's gonna expire very, very soon. So you have about one month before this goes away. So make sure you guys are using it, all right? So let's talk about the selector ticket. Which one is going to be the best one, ideally, moving forward? And I know a lot of you guys are still thinking, you're still deciding, you'll be like, okay, so right now I'm a bit confused. The selector, what students should I pick from this particular one? Now, if you guys haven't watched my previous guides, by far the best students to pick is going to be either Ako or Himari. Now, this is going to be the two students that's going to be the most distinct right now. But Ako's banner is also right here available. Uh, if you guys are not aware, you can basically, if you want to, you can reroll for Ako and then get Himari afterwards right from the selector. You can also do that, all right? So uh, the value of that students are going to depend on you. Now, both Ako and Himari, are not limited all right so they are not limited characters in fact this selector only includes students that are in the standard banner none of the students here are limited so you have to keep that in mind all right moving forward right so right now uh if you guys are not aware all right a lot of people have been uh, asking me regarding this right Ako versus himari is Ako still going to be the meta or himari is still going to be the beta in the future because in the future, we're going to have this new student called Kisaki. Now, Kisaki is going to be very, very similar to Himari because uh, if you look at what she is capable of right here, so uh, instead of the main skill of increasing attack percent, what she does is she increases EX skill damage by up to 80%. Now, that is a lot of EX skill damage. All right, so again, everything else is kind of similar. She also has cost recovery for 20%. Again, that is like pretty much Himari skill right here, right? It also cost recovery. So uh, instead of the attack percent boost, now you have a EX skill damage boost. Now there's a chance that Himari will be less used in the future once Kisaki comes out five months from now, right? Hopefully players start saving for her. Now you can see right here in the JP meta, all right? So what players substitute around for not having Himari is they use Camping Hair, all right? So it's a two cost uh, student right here, all right? So let me see if I can show you guys. So you can see you got camping hair, uh, buffing uh, dress Hina in this case, and then you got Ako, and then you got Kisaki right there. So that's the rotation uh, pretty much, right? Now obviously, if you don't have Ako, you can also use New Year Fuuka. Uh, that wouldn't be too much of a deal, right? But Ako, Ako's ability to provide uh, healing is also going to be very, very good, very, very substantial overall. Now, ideally, you should be pulling for Kisaki in the future, right? That's just a no-brainer. She is going to be one of the strongest meta character in the long run. 
But for up until 5 months from now, Ako and Himari is still the meta. Alright, they are still the staple. Now if Kisaki were to come, Himari will be the one that will be replaced, not Ako. So Ako is still going to be quite valuable. Hopefully you guys try to get her, you know, since we have like one Ako banner going on right now. So outside of Ako and Himari, who is going to be a very very good uh, character for the third candidate? I would say Iroha. Now Iroha, very very strong. Now um, I'm going to place Iroha slightly below Ako and Himari. Now why is that, right? The reason why is because uh, there's one character that's a very good pair with Iroha, and that's going to be Ibuki. Now sadly, you cannot get Ibuki anymore. So if you just started recently and you don't have Ibuki, all right, if you don't have Ibuki, then your Iroha priority, I would say, is slightly below Ako and Himari. Because in some situation, in a lot of raids, uh, comboing them together is just insane. All right, again, this is just my humble opinion. I feel like if you're trying to tackle Perorzilla, if you're trying to do like uh, any raid bosses, like even in the previous Gregorius, in the blue one, you can basically run the combo together. Now, Iroha alone can be all right. All right, you can still do a bunch of damage, but not as strong as when you pair them together. Now, if this is together, if you have Ibuki, I will place them on the same par with Ako and Himari, right? Of course, this is only if you have Ibuki. Now, if you don't have Ibuki, then I'm going to say uh, right now, I'm going to put the priority on the second place. I will still stay prioritized on Ako and Himari first. Now, also one more thing to consider about Iroha for new players, all right? So I have Iroha at max, all right? I'm a veteran player. And this is something to consider, my Iroha is 6 costs, alright? Very very strong, you can somewhat spam her skills easily. But if you are a new player, alright, a lot of, I see a lot of players trying to give advice you should get Iroha first. A lot of new players, they are going to run into this issue, because Iroha, if you don't build her correctly or you don't try to max her skill fast, you're gonna start with the EX skill cost of 8, right? Iroha at skill level 1 and skill level 2 is gonna be 8 costs. Level 3 and level 4 is going to be 7 costs, and level 5 is going to be 6 costs. So for a lot of new players, if you just started the game, you might not have all of these necessary books to get her up all the way to skill level 5, right? So your Iroha is either 8 costs or 7 costs, and that's going to be a very big difference, alright? Your Iroha is like less spammable, she can still do decent damage, but at way more cost and you are you might struggle even more if you don't have like himari and stuff no cost regen to be able to have the consistent uh, cost up right so it's going to like put you at a very tough spot which is also something that you have to consider for a lot of players if you are building specifically for story there's also like other characters that you have to invest in for example like momo and stuff right to be able to push there now the next one that i think a lot of players uh, overlook this is something that i believe most of you guys are going to agree with me with is going to be Cherino. Now, I think Cherino is going to be one of the stronger characters from the striker slot. Now, she is a very unique character. Why is that? It's because she has cost regen in her skills. So that means you can basically use Cherino without needing to activate her skill. She will still be able to give you passive uh, cost regen, cost recovery up there. Now, obviously, she is a very expensive character as well. As you can see, 7 costs, and she goes down to 5 costs as well. Uh, but you can use her easily early on, right? Later on, she can basically carry you in a lot of necessary crucial stages. For example, the base defense, all right? Which I see a lot of new players struggle with. A lot of people come to me and ask, hey, I can't do this particular stage. And every time during the double uh, commissions, I saw like some new players account that I review, they are stuck at either like stage 8 or stage 9, they can't push higher because of the lack of Cherino. Cherino is going to be very strong right here because she gives cost recovery and she's also an AoE yellow character and you want to have yellow uh, AoE characters right here to be able to like deal with this. Also, in a lot of raids, Cherino is very very good for the specifically cost regen reason, right? Now next up, after Cherino, who would be in a similar priority? In my opinion, Yori is also a very strong character. She's a 3 cost character, right? So this is going to be much easier to use compared to most students where you gotta max the skill to get like the last cost. So Yori starts out easily at 3 cost. Uh, she's going to be a very easy character to use. Uh, Yori is going to be a very very good character. Now, I am aware that she is farmable. All right, Yori is one of the few students that I'm going to recommend as farmable. However, if you are a new player, to farm her, you got to unlock at least stage 14. 
You have to beat all the way up until stage 14, I believe, to get your first Yori one, which is here, stage 14. But even then, you can only do three times per day, right? Uh, unless you, you are willing to refresh with your gems. And then you get one more at stage uh, 20 something, 20. So you do farm a little bit of Yori shards here and there, but let's say on average, you get about two shards per day. It's going to take you about three to four months before you get her. So that's going to be something that will take you quite a while. And early game, Yori has been carrying a lot of accounts. As far as I know, she's a very, very strong, uh, crucial character. You can also try to reroll her from the first 10 rolls. All right. She is in that particular option alongside. Uh, I think she's also the best one as well for a lot of players, right? Uh, she's a very good PvP character. She's also a very good PvE character. So if you care about doing both PvE and PvP, this is where Yori is going to shine. Very, very strong character. Highly recommend. I'm going to put her a little bit below Iroha, but she's still a very, very good option. Now, speaking of PvP, if you don't want Yori, another option is going to be Shun. Now, Shun, I'm going to place her same priority with Yori, same priority with Cherino, and same priority with... uh. These three, I would say, like they are about the same. Now, Shun is a very strong character in PvP. She is strictly a PvP character. You can still use her occasionally in PvE scenario, occasionally, but she's not being used in Total Assault, Grand Assault as much. All right, so she gives cost when the battle begins, but not cost recovery. So she instantly gives you about 3.8 cost at the beginning of the battle if you max this skill, right? Now that means that in PvP, you're able to uh, have the advantage over your enemy. You get the burst extra skill cost at the beginning. Very, very crucial if you're trying to win battles. Uh, ideally, she's the PvP carry for most players. I've never seen Shun not being used in the top 100 PvP rank. Now, Shun does have the value because you cannot farm her, right? Compared to Yori, you can still farm her. Now, if you care about getting students that cannot be farmed, getting more roster of meta characters, then Shun might be the ideal choice for you. And then, you know, you can slowly farm Yori if that's what you lean towards, right? Now, another character that I would say very, very crucial is going to be Ui. Now, this is going to depend on a lot of factors, right? Number one is, do you have New Year Fuuka? Now, New Year Fuuka and Ui are going to be the two characters, right? that are going to be used a lot. So um, whether or not she's valuable depends on whether or not you have New Year Fuuka. If you don't have New Year Fuuka, I believe her value skyrocket. In fact, I will place her right here on par with uh, Iroha because she is still going to be a very, very good character. But if you have New Year Fuuka, uh, her priority probably is right here because uh, they both fill the same role in terms of trying to decrease an EX skill cost by half. All right. So for example, if a character is six costs, they become three costs. Now, Ui is going to be also a little bit hard to build for new players, right? Because you can see right here, five costs at the beginning at skill level one. And she goes down all the way to three costs at max level. So you ideally want to be able to max out her EX skill as well. And one more thing is also she is a striker slot student. So I would place her priority behind Aqua and Himari. Now, one thing that I see a lot of players struggle with Ui specifically is because she's a striker student, right? Compared to Ako and Himari, like I mentioned earlier, these are all going to be special students. So being a striker student means she's usually up there in front. She's also going to take damage from the boss, all right? Especially if you're trying to use her in some of the raid bosses. Uh, if you don't build her gears up high enough, she might suffer a little bit. So for newer players, I would say can be a little bit of a of a challenge, right? To make her work compared to Aqua and Himari. But other than that, that's probably one thing that you have to like keep in mind going into her. So if you're completely new, I still recommend Aqua and Himari. Obviously, right? This is something that, you know, they are always hiding at the back. If your gears is T1, it doesn't matter, right? But for Ui, you can't really get away with T1 gears. It's going to be like very, very expensive. You got to like invest more into her, right? So I'm going to place her right here, just in case if you don't have New Year Fuuka, which I'm going to assume some of you who do not have New Year Fuuka, she would be right here. But if you have New Year Fuuka, uh, there's probably like instances where you can get away with not having her. All right. So let's talk about the next one. All right. Let's say you got these are the least priority lists. Uh, in my humble opinion, these are the most important characters from this particular selector. Right. Ako, Himari, Iroha, uh, Ui, Cherino, Yori, Shun. Now, is there any other like notable mentions? Right. I want to talk about like I want to give the honorable mention. Now, the first one that I can think of is going to be Asuko right here. I believe she's going to be a very, very strong character. All right. Uh, she, I've seen like some players use her in PvP as well. Very, very good. 
very very strong. However, if you are a new player, I probably wouldn't advise you to build Asuko just yet, right? Because like if you are new, Subaki and Yuuka is free. And those two are farmable, right? You can basically farm them and get them up to like 3 star, 4 star, 5 star even. But for Asuko, let's say you pick her, she's gonna be 3 star. And probably in most situations, 3 star is gonna be fine. But if you're trying to like tackle a little bit of a higher end rate or, uh, you know, like let's say you are starting to go to extreme insane, getting her stars up is gonna give her more stats and therefore it's going to be better. Now in a lot of situations, if you don't have Asuko as well, you can still sort of borrow her, right? So that's why I'm going to put her right here, but she's a very unique healer defender. All right, she specializes in healing uh, characters surrounding her. Very, very unique. I actually like her a lot. Uh, I do recommend trying to get her if you can. She's still a standard banner character, so hopefully, you know, if you guys can spook her, that would be nice as well. Now, obviously, Aru is also going to be a character that I see a lot of people, uh, you know, might recommend. Uh, she's a very strong character. Some players might consider her to be on par with Yori. And I can see that for sure, right? However, again, she's also a farmable character. The reason why I put Yori as a as a way higher priority is because Yori is very good in PvP. Whereas Aru is probably I feel like she's alright, she's decent, but like nowhere near Yori's potential, right? Because Yori is three cost, Aru is four cost, and also like that one cost. It makes a lot of difference, man, in PvP. It just does. But uh, early on, you might be able to get away with not having her yet because uh, you have access to Mutsuki, which is a 2-star. And also some of you guys might have Suzumi, uh, a bunch of Akari, a bunch of AoE characters, right? So it's going to be much easier to, to slowly build her uh, later on. So I'm going to put her at the fourth place. And one more is Azusa. Azusa is, is a character that you can easily get for free. All right, so if you guys are not aware, she is available in the shop right here. All right, so Azusa is a student that you can pretty much get easily so i wouldn't prioritize getting her all right she shouldn't be like the main priority but she's also one of the notable mentioned ones she's a very very strong one uh, ideally the better way is still to get her from the shop but i still feel like it's worth mentioning because she's going to be very very strong haruna is also one of the students that i believe uh, a lot of players might consider getting she is a bit more strict in terms of her aoe capabilities all right she basically hits in a very small thin line but we also have a few other AoE characters like Chisei for example that you can also take advantage of. Now Koharu is a very very good healer. Again, same can be bought in the shop. Uh, ideally, buying from the shop is going to be a better way for going on about her. Now if you insist of buying a healer on a striker slot, I would highly recommend getting Kokona instead. Kokona is going to be a student that She's used quite a lot, alright? She's used quite a lot. You can use her in Hieronymus for the heal. You can use her in a lot of situations. She is one of the meta students uh, that's being used also in the Fury of Set, if you care about that. So there's that, right? So you're basically getting her for the value right there. So I feel like she's a better pick than Koharu. Since Koharu, you can be purchased. You can literally get her shots from the uh, shop right here, alright? In a total assault again. So that's going to be something to consider. So make sure you guys are cross-checking the Total Assault Shop, Grand Assault Shop with the selector. Because like, ideally you don't want to pick dupes, right, for this particular game. Uh, it's going to be a waste. Now another student that is worth noting is going to be Hinata. If you are looking for an AoE student, I usually don't recommend her and I would say like she's one of the like lesser priority one. But if you want her, she can be used in Perorzilla and she can also be used in Goss, right? She's one of the better students to use right there. However, she is very expensive at 6 cost. So you gotta like, you know, again, it's not for new player. If you are a newer player, obviously, the other students are still going to be the priority. And I think that's pretty much the coverage for most students right here. Marina can also be picked if you care about PvP, but of course, Yori and Shun should still be the priority. All right, so if you care about that, uh, PvP specifically, still recommend Yori and Shun first. Those should be the, the main one because you can get away with using Subaki in PvP specifically. Now let's talk about the special slot alongside with uh, all of the ones that I mentioned, Ako, Himari, Iroha, who else can also be picked. I would say Hot Spring Nadoka, if you're looking for a healer on your special slot, she is also a decent candidate for PvP if you're looking for healer, but ideally you can get away with just using Serena as well, right? So which is going to be something to consider. You can probably also use her occasionally in joint firing drill here and there, but she's definitely going to be one of the better healer for the special slot. Another last candidate that I want to mention is Hibiki. 
Now, I didn't mention her or put her in the priority is because we had Nagisa recently. Nagisa Banner just left, right? So Nagisa Banner, I'm sure a lot of you guys put for her. Nagisa is a very, very strong character. She's essentially pretty much a must-have for a lot of players. So if you get Nagisa, it's only for Hibiki. But if you don't have Nagisa, should you get Hibiki? Like, she's also farmable, right? You can also farm Hibiki from the hard stages. You will eventually get her. But I feel like Nagisa is just way better that I've never used Hibiki ever since I got Nagisa. There's no situation where you want to use Hibiki if you have Nagisa. The only players... So if you are building... So if you are picking her up specifically just to build her, you're, I, I, I don't know if it's a good advice to take to pick a character that's like the second best and build them when there's a better version of that, that particular student uh, available, right? But of course, if you skip out on Nagisa, you have to wait like probably next year before she comes back. So I understand that if that's the perspective, then you can go for Hibiki. I do have Hibiki build, which is why I'm saying this, right? I've almost never used her after I got Nagisa, right? That's going to be, again, this is all from my perspective. So yeah, uh, those are going to be pretty much the students that I highly recommend. Now, if there's a reason, for example, like some of these students I don't recommend as much, for example, New Yosurika, Mashiro, Sena, these are all in the shop, all right? Which is why I don't feel like you want to pick, I don't think you want to pick students that are available in Total Assault Shop or Grand Assault because you can pretty much farm them, all right? So there's going to be that moving forward. All right, so with that being said, that is going to be the selector guy. Uh, let me show you guys again. These are the honorable mentions and the priority list, in my humble opinion, from top to bottom. All right, so again, feel free to comment in the comment section below. Let me know what you guys think, uh, if you guys agree or disagree. As always, I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a nice day. Goodbye.